Okay, so this is just a quick disclaimer. This is not the only way to pack a parachute or the correct way with air quotations. This is my way. This is the easiest method that I've learned thus far. The terminology used in this video may not be correct or proper, but is explained in the simplest manner possible for beginners. Once again, there are many ways to pack a parachute and this is my way of doing it and explaining it. I hope it helps you on your packing journey. Enjoy. All right, what's going on guys? My name is Salvador Chang. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work at Scott Ive de Land. I am a packer, I'm a rigger, and this is what I do on the daily. So I'm just gonna go over a quick tutorial to teach you guys basically how to pack from like beginning, not knowing anything. So like getting it all the way completed so you can go do another skydive. Yep. All right, let's get it. So basically we have the rig here. Um, this is like if you basically took it off, put it in a pile. I'm just gonna go from start to finish. So you're gonna pick up the rig Kind of make sure that the lines are away from the rig so everything's separated and then just kind of walk it back and now you want to walk, walk it back until the lines are taut and then kind of lay it the rig on its stomach and then you can pull the leg straps out like this make sure the three rings right here are facing kind of out or flat either which way and now this is how ideally you would want the rig to be sitting now we're going to go ahead and store our brakes um, these are not stowed, so you can see we want to untangle them first and foremost um, and pull them down past this little ring. There's going to be a little loop here. What we're going to do is basically put this top piece through the, the loop and you want the lines to be on the inside and the excess to be on the outside. And then we're just going to tuck that away right there. You see there's this little bottom pin here. We're going to go ahead and tuck that away. <clears throat> and then once again, the lines are always on the inside and the excess is on the outside. We're going to fold this like that, go ahead and tuck that in there. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side, and then we'll have our brakes stowed. It should look like that when you're done. So once again, we're going to do the same exact thing on this side. Untangle these lines, make sure everything is good to go. <clears throat> All right, we're going to pull once again this little opening right here past the ring. Died. No, you're good, bro. It shut off. You're fine. Oh, there we go. The screen shut off. Yeah, you're fine. So once again, we're going to pull this down past the ring until you see the little opening. We're going to take this top piece of the handle, put it through the opening, and then tuck it in right there. Once again, the lines are on the inside. The excess goes to the outside. And we're going to tuck this little pin right there and there. Fold this in half and tuck that away. The reason we tuck the way the excess is because when we're reaching up to grab our toggles, we don't want to grab them accidentally. So that's why we kind of tuck this away so that when we look up and we're under canopy, we kind of look and this is clean and there's nothing really else that I can grab besides the toggles. So once again, now we have these three right here. We have the front risers, the rear risers, and the control lines. I'm going to separate those with my fingers into threes. So ideally it should look like that in my palm. And we're just gonna walk up the lines, making sure as we walk them up that we get all the tangles out of it. <clears throat> and you see how the canopy is twisted right now? All we wanna do is kind of untwist the canopy. And then we're just walking it up some more. <clears throat> and what we wanna see ideally is we wanna run our knuckles all the way up into these grommets on the slider. And we wanna see that there's no twists on both on top and below the uh, slider. So it looks like everything's clear. We want to keep tension on our lines behind us and then you're just going to step out. You're going to dump everything into one hand. You can see here. I'm just going to take pinky to pinky. Just kind of dump all my fingers there. Make sure my control lines are nice and clear. Looks like everything's clear back there. There's no twist, nothing crazy going on. I'm going to get the slack out of it and dump it over my shoulder into the canopy and then kind of walk it up so that the grommets are to my chest. All right, so now we kind of turn the canopy 90 degrees. I'm just gonna count out my nose cells. I have the, fat, uh, the uh, label out front, it should be away from me, and then there should be a label touching my body. That's why I know the canopy is 90 degrees. Count my nose cells out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're either gonna have seven or nine. This canopy has nine no cells. So I know I have all of them right here and I'm just gonna grab them with my left hand, kind of shake them out. And you'll notice when I pick them up with my left hand, these two separate. I'm gonna grab with my right hand 
this set of lines here and kind of give it a shimmy. Now the reason we're doing this is so we kind of get the canopy sitting where it needs to sit and kind of lays out where it wants to go. As we're doing this shimmy, I'm gonna take the no cells and throw it between my legs. Just like that. And then I can kind of pinch, but not too hard, just enough to kind of hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna separate the left side and the right side of the canopy. Kind of walk it up right here. <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and work on my A-line. So if you wanna come over here, Kev. You're gonna see this little pocket here, and it's gonna have this group of lines right here. You're gonna count out five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just gonna tuck my hand on the inside and then work my hand out. That's about it. So kind of just tuck it in and just kind of kick the material out. This way we're keeping the lines in and the material goes out. We're gonna do the same exact thing on this, uh, the right side. So I'm gonna look for this little pocket here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna kind of put my hand in there and push all the material out while the lines are staying in. All right. <clears throat> now, as I work from the A lines, you can see if you follow the seam all the way around, it's gonna lead you to this group of lines right here. Now, what we're gonna do from here is just follow the seam and we're gonna count these four out. One, two, three, still following the seam. Four. And I want to have my palm out and I just want to kind of let these rest between my fingers uh, on my thumb, preferably. <clears throat> then you're going to notice that there's going to be these four lines here. They kind of just sit at the same length. You have one, two, three, four. These are going to be your D lines. They kind of just sit at relatively the same length. I'm going to separate those as well. And then we have our C lines. I'm going to use my pinky to grab those. One, two, three, four. So you'll see here, at the end of it, your hand should look like this, where you have obviously- Control lines. D, your C. Control lines. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take my other hand and kind of karate chop so that the material goes out. And I, once again, I'm gonna let go of my pinky so the lines stay in. Always and forever, you want the material out and the lines in. So once again, I have the three in my hand. I'm gonna work my way from the closest towards me, karate chop out, I'm gonna drop my pinky and move on to the next one out. Once again, material out, karate chop, and then I'm gonna drop this one so the lines are in. And then on this last one, where my thumb is at, I'm just gonna kind of whip it over with my wrist inside of a, kind of a this action so that everything kind of folds over and we have this cone shape at the end of it. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did on here on this side. So once again, I'm gonna move a little quicker. We're gonna work from here. Follow the seams, one, two, <clears throat> three, four. Now I have my hand set up where my thumb's at. Then I'm gonna grab these four lines here. These are gonna be uh, my D lines, one, two, three, four. And then my C lines, one, two, three, four. Once again, it looks exactly the same as the left hand side. I'm gonna pick it up, karate chop so that the material's on the outside, drop my pinky. I'm gonna pick this set up, karate chop, drop this finger. And then last but not least, once again, the material's on the outside, lines on the inside. I'm gonna flick my wrist so that it does that little cone. And then I like to tuck everything into the middle so that you have this, this kind of cones on both sides coming into the center. Now this is one of the most important steps that we're gonna do here is go ahead and quarter the slider. Um, so to the front, you'll see I can quarter the slider to the sides, do the same thing on this side, and then to the back. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the slider out so that it presents itself nice and I have these pockets. Ideally, it should look like that. And then you kind of put them together, just like that. I'm gonna pick everything up with my right hand and grab the tail in the front. Now, once I grab the tail, I'm gonna look for the label and that's how I know that's the center of the uh, canopy. I'm gonna pull that up to the lines and get everything as tight as I can here. Now I'm not pinching, I'm not twisting, I'm just pinching for the most part, I'm not twisting yet, but I wanna make sure that when I pinch, I can't get a finger in there for the most part. It's so tight and all the lines are together, I can't really put a finger in there. I'm just gonna hold that with my left hand. Now I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna grab the right side of the canopy, following the seam from my hand, and I'm just gonna knee it. And as I'm kneeing it, I'm gonna bring the canopy around towards the middle. So it should look just like that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna grab following the seam and knee it. And as I knee, I'm gonna pull the canopy towards the center. And at the end of it, it should be a wrap like that. You should have a 
like a cocoon almost. Now this is the part where we're gonna, where we're gonna twist. So you're gonna grab up here. You're gonna twist up top. Now when I'm twisting, I'm twisting a little bit and then pinching, I'm twisting a little bit, then pinching, I'm twisting a little bit, then pinching. And ideally it should look like that. Once again, we can't put a finger inside of it. I'm gonna grab a whole handful of that. You should be able to pick up the whole canopy like this. You should be able to manipulate it, nothing going on with both sides in the middle. Now I'm gonna grab these two little sides. I'm gonna pin them against my hip. And as I do that, I'm gonna twist. And I'm pulling away from my hands. My right hand is pulling away from my left hand, keeping this whole thing nice and taut all the way through. Just twisting, pinning against my hip, twisting, pinning against my hip. Now I can go ahead and manipulate the whole canopy with these two arms. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it just like this. Once again, this is nice and tight still. I'm gonna take my right hand and just pick everything up like that. Now, as you're picking this up, you wanna keep your lines nice and taut. They shouldn't be touching the ground right now. And then you just wanna lay this down like a baby you're not trying to wake up. So it should look just like that. Now, once again, the cocoon's nice and tight. You have your left and your right side of the canopy. You can see the wind blowing hella hard right now. I'm gonna pull my pilot chute out from underneath it. Just like that. So now I have the D-bag and the pilot chute. And then this is the center of the canopy here. Now, this is where I set up the D-bag. Um, the grommets are gonna be flat on the floor. You wanna make sure that this isn't inside out or nothing crazy is going on, that this line is coming straight through like that. And that you're basically preparing the bag so that the canopy can go, can go in as easily as possible. So you just set it up like that. Make sure your rubber bands are looking good. Looks like all my rubber bands are intact. And then now you wanna go ahead and cock the pilot chute. Now when I say cock the pilot chute, basically what we're doing is we have the D-bag set up. We're gonna go ahead and put our foot down here. We're gonna pull up on here. I'm not gonna grab the, the uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to grab the bridle like in a closed fist. I'm going to kind of leave it open and I'm just going to use it as a pulley. That's all I'm doing here. And I'm going to use this hand to go ahead and pull the line out as taut as I can so that the pilot chute is then cocked. And this is one of the most important things. You want to make sure you do a snap test and make sure that your pilot chute is cocked so that when you pull your pilot chute out, it catches air and then pulls your uh, canopy out. All right. So pilot chute's out. We have the D-bag set up. And this is probably the hardest part, the part that most people have the trouble with, so you wanna come over my shoulder. I have the cocoon here, I have the label here, and basically what I'm gonna do is put my knees on top of the label, making sure not to put my knees on the grommets, but on top of the label. So right now the grommets are like right here. I'm probably gonna throw my knees here. The grommets are here, my knees are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck my knees on top of the label. And then what we're trying to do is create like a cocoon or a cigar, basically bring all the whole canopy as tight as possible, relatively the size of the D-bag is what we're kind of aiming for. So once again, I'm gonna roll my hands and push upwards all the material, trying to get the air out of it. And while we're doing this, you wanna keep that center seam nice and even. It wants to center it the whole time. So it should, when you're looking at it like this, it should be nice and even. So once again, we're rolling it, pushing it out and getting the air out of it. Just doing that again and again. You can kind of get off of it and then use your pelvis and your whole body to kind of push the air out of it. So pelvis on the label, kind of lay on it, lay it out. Push the air out. And then this is where you kind of smell the carpet and reflect on your life and your decisions and how you got here. All right, so for the most part, that looks good. It's relatively the size of the D-bag. Now I'm gonna make sure that I take my left hand and I'm gonna grab the top up here. And I should be able to manipulate the whole canopy with this one hand under here, just like that. So we have this, I'm gonna move my knees up forward. And you see this white center line right here, kind of peeking through the canopy. I'm gonna go ahead and karate chop there and just kind of fold over myself. So now I have the canopy kind of sitting in my lap and my hand is still under here. What I'm gonna do now is basically grab this center seam here. And I'm gonna roll this center seam over my hand. And at the same time, I'm gonna kind of mount the whole canopy. And then of course, after that, you pull your left hand out and you should be able to sit on top of the canopy like this with your knees on both sides of it. 
having the left and the right side of the canopy and then you're just going to kind of roll it in just like that keeping your knees on it so it doesn't spill out and now the left side is done i'm going to do the same exact thing with this rolling motion doing the right side just like that <clears throat> now you should be able to manipulate the whole canopy with your right arm like ideally i can pick it up and move it around just like that i'm going to set up my d-bag so it's nice and flat and ready for the canopy to go in and what i'm going to do now <clears throat> is take these grommets and push them as far back as possible while picking up the canopy it's going to make my life easier on this next step now you want to bring the d-bag around the canopy you don't want to put the canopy inside the d-bag so what, how to do that is I'm gonna take the left side and just remove my knee and pull this back as far as I can while putting it around the D-bag, or the uh, canopy, sorry. So once again, you can see it's like almost basically sideways and half of it's already done. I'm gonna pin this half down with my knee and move on to the right side. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab the whole right side of the canopy, just dump that thing in there and I'm not gonna let go until it's all the way tucked in there just like that. Now I can remove my hand, push this in there, and we're looking good right there. Now I know I'm in good shape because I have half the canopy in and I can see the grommets peeking out from both the left and the right sides. That's how we know we're in good shape. Now I'm going to put my hand down with the palm facing up. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to grab right here. I'm just going to pick up. And when I'm picking up, I'm going to cut this in half and just tuck the grommets in to do my second S fold. I'm gonna pick up from the D-bag and just tuck that in there right, nice and neat. Now, this is what you should see. You should have the two canopy lips and the strings coming out from in between them. That's how you know you did it. Exactly. It should look exactly like that. That's how you know you did it right. Now I'm gonna lay it back down and kind of just roll everything into place, putting the rubber bands as close to the grommets as possible to make my next step easier. So once again, I'm using my weight to kind of roll everything in there and then taking the rubber bands through the grommets. Just pulling them. I'm gonna do my first stow. So in order to keep the parachute in the bag, this is how we get it done. We're gonna do our first stow. I'm gonna make an L with my left hand, put my L through so that the rubber band is up to my knuckles. And then I'm just gonna grab the string, the lines and pull them through. You want about like an inch, maybe an inch and a half of excess like that. Now to double stow, what we're gonna do is make a peace sign. We're gonna grab it with our peace sign and pull up on it. And when we pull up on it, we're gonna have our two, two uh, rubber band pieces. You wanna pull the rubber band piece that's farthest away from you and then wrap it around the stow we already have. That's gonna be your second, or that's double stowing. And we're gonna do the same exact thing on all these primary stows here, there's four of them. So once again, I'm rolling, putting the rubber band through the grommet, pulling all the way through, making my L with my left hand, rubber band goes to my knuckles. I'm gonna be pulling the rig towards me, kind of where I want the stow, and then I'm gonna let the rubber band go around about an inch, inch and a half. And once again, that's the first stow. Now to do the second stow, we're gonna do the peace sign. We're gonna pull up on it, the rubber band piece that's farthest away from us, we're grabbing, pulling, and wrapping it around. So now we have double stows. It should look just like that. Now I'm gonna finish up these primary stows here. We're gonna do the same exact thing. And we're just gonna basically go back and forth, left to right, left to right, all the way up the canopy. So once again, left side, through the grommet, pulling it so I can make my L on my knuckles. I'm gonna pick this up here and just kind of where I want the stow to be imaginary wrap it up just like that. About an inch, inch and a half. The peace sign, pull the one away from me, wrap it around. Now your stoves should look like this. They should be separated from each other. There shouldn't be any excess going on and nothing crazy. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and we're just gonna work our way all the way up. Once again, pulling the rubber band through the grommet, making my L, grabbing the string, the lines, to where I want them to be, about an inch, inch and a half. And then peace sign, grabbing the string around, good to go. There's that. <laughs> Mike's sitting on the rig. <laughs> <laughs>
I was wondering why it got heavy all of a sudden. I was trying to pull on it. I was like, this is weird. But yeah, I'm holding this stow while I'm going to make the next one. So once again, I'm holding this side. I'm imagining where I want the next stow to be. I want it to be around here. I'm gonna go ahead and create it with my hand. That's about an inch, inch and a half. And then I'm gonna take the rubber band and wrap it around twice, just going over top of it. And I'll do that one more time. So once again, we're holding it here. I'm gonna grab the rubber band and just wrapping it around my thumb and then doing the same exact thing. And that's a double stow. I'm just gonna keep working away. Once again, I'm holding the left side, making the stow imaginary where I want it, about an inch, an inch and a half there, grabbing one of the rubber bands, wrapping it around. And when you're a packer like me, you do this every day, so you get pretty quick at it and it happens fast. But in, in, when you're first starting, trust me, it'll, it'll take some time. If you can get it in the bag, though, that's the hardest part. So if you can get it in the bag, then you're good to go. Once again, holding this stuff, pulling the lines about here, where I want the stove to be. It's about an inch, inch and a half. Wrapping the rubber band around. <clears throat> now I'm gonna need one more rubber band for this side. So you should have three rubber bands on each side of your D bag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another rubber band there. So we have another one and then I can do another stow. Okay, so I'm glad we got here. Look, so you don't want, as far as excess, the length, you don't want it to be this close. If I was gonna make this stow, this, there would be no excess here. So this is probably gonna be the last stow that we're gonna do. Ideally, <clears throat> when you turn your D bag, the, the excess should be about the size of the D, bag, the D bag. So as you can see here, relatively, if I was gonna make another stow, it would be too close and there wouldn't be any excess. I know, bro, I know. Way too many line stows. So ideally, it should, be, it should look like this, and then at the end of it, your line stow should look like this. Everything should be nice and separated. There shouldn't be anything overlapping anything, no tanglements, no nothing. Now, what we're gonna do with this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the excess that I have here and pick it up over the rig, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna make sure that I don't twist it this way at all. I wanna make sure that the only way that I twist it is flipping it over itself. I don't wanna twist it this way. So once again, I'm gonna grab all this, kind of dump it over the rig, and put it there for now. Just like that. With this bridle, it can go off to the right, kind of just leave it there. This is also another good time to double check to see if your pilot chute is cocked. So what you can do is just kind of step on the bag. Once again, we're just cocking the pilot chute. Use your left hand as a pulley and pull all the way over yourself. Make sure everything's nice and tight and do a snap test. Looks like it's good to go. It should catch air like that, and if it does, it's good. All right, so bridle off to the right. We're just gonna tuck away the risers now. So as you can see here, everything's kind of up and out of way. You wanna make sure there's no twists here. You just grab everything. And an easy way to remember this is that your handles or your toggles should always face the container. So I'm gonna flip this just like this. You can see that my toggles are facing the container. There's no twist on my lines all the way up. I'm just gonna kind of tuck these in here in my riser flaps, just like that. So you're gonna do this flap first, tuck that in there, and then this one, there's magnets here. Every rig is a little different, but there's magnets on this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, kind of tuck that in there, just like that. So now it looks like a, a parachute. This is how you should kind of see it when people wear it around. Once again, there's no twists here in the lines. And an easy way to remember it is as, as long as the toggles and the handles are facing the canopy, you're in good shape. No twists, nothing to be concerned about. I'm just gonna open this up and kind of lay that in there. Sorry, lay that in there and just kind of tuck it right in there. This way everything is nice and even. Looks good like that. Fold that over. Open the magnets up. Fold them over. And then close her up. So there's that. Now, if you have excess up top, or it looks a bit weird, what you can do is, to get rid of the excess up here, is just grab these lines and kind of pull that way towards the bottom of the rig, and you'll be able to get rid of the excess. Now, we're gonna go ahead and grab this top flap and get it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that down with my knee. I'm gonna open the bottom of the container so I can go ahead and put the parachute and the D-bag inside of it. So, we're gonna open this up, make sure everything looks good. 
Everything's nice and presentable. You have that nice square there. I'm pinning the top flap down with my knee. I'm gonna grab the D-bag and once again, flip it over. Not this way. Once again, this way. And just make sure that I tuck these the excess lines into the corners of the tray, just like that. You should have a W or an M, depending on which way you're looking at it. And then you're just gonna go ahead and put the D-bag right on top of that with the grommet facing up. So that's how it should look. And then I'm gonna flip over from working on that side of the rig to this side of the rig. Now, what our job is to do now is if I have a power tool, if I have a closing loop, now would be a good time to go ahead and, or power tool or a, uh, uh, what is it called? A pull-up cord, dude, I'm a shot. Okay, so now you either have a power tool or a pull-up cord, now would be a good time to go ahead and put it through the closing loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one. Do I wanna what? No, I'm good, I, I appreciate you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this through here. This is gonna get us ready for our next step. All right, so our job now is to go ahead and pull up on the uh, reserve. And as we're pulling up on the reserve, we're gonna go ahead and bring this grommet down so that the lines are at the bottom of the container. Kind of like that. But as I pull and I tuck and I pull and I tuck and I kind of shimmy it in there, you can see how the lines are peeking out from the bottom now. This is ideally what we want. Like a little bit, but not too much. And that looks good once again, the grommet is facing the top of the container. So everything is good there. Now, the way to close this up, you'll see that there's four flaps. There's a bottom flap, a top flap, and then you have your left and right flaps. So the way that we remember this is bottom, top, right, left. Um, skydivers, they're interesting people, <laughs> but they go by big titty, rich lady. So it's like bottom, top, right, left, big, titty, rich lady. That's how I remember it. That's how all the packers teach it. Um, it's an easy way to remember it. So we're gonna, gonna do big, titty, rich lady. Big, bottom. We're gonna go ahead and put these two pieces through here. Top. And the easiest way to close this is, I do the bottom top at the same time. Um, I go ahead and route the bottom through the top and then I pull the opposite direction of the flap. So for instance, if the flap is on the top, I'm gonna pull towards the bottom and basically using leverage. So once again, bottom top, I'm pulling, and then I pull down, because it's the opposite. And you see how much edge closing loop we have there? I'm just gonna pin it down with my knee. This way I don't lose any of that work that I just did. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that down with my knee so that the closing loop is coming through the grommets. Now bottom top, right, left, we're gonna go ahead and do right side. And we're do when we're doing the right, we want to make sure that the bridle is always coming out the bottom right. And now we have our closing pin here. It's coming out the bottom right. So once again, I'm going to close the right side. There's that. We want to make sure we fix our corners. See how it was kind of sitting like that? We want to fix our corners before we put tension on it. So once again, the corners are nice and fixed. Everything looks presentable nice. I'm going to pull the opposite way of the flap. So it's the right side. I'm pulling to the left side of the rig. Once again, pinning it down with my knee so it's not going anywhere. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the left side. Pull up, put the pull-up cord through. Before I put tension on it, I fix the corners out so it doesn't look like that. I'm going to tuck everything in. And then I'm pulling the opposite way to close it up. And you should have a little bit of extra closing loop peeking out like that. That's what we're going to put the pin in. So from the bottom right, we're going to go ahead and take the pin. We're gonna always make sure that the pin is facing up when we put it through, always. So once again, it should look like this with the pin facing up. It's closed bottom top, right, left. Everything looks good to go. Um, the riser covers are covered, everything's good. It looks like you can go ahead and put it on your back and good to go. Now when we're pulling the pull-up cord out, we wanna make sure that it's underneath the pin. So ideally, <clears throat> we kind of get it underneath like that. So we're not putting extra pressure or extra tear on our closing loop because over time that'll kill your closing loop and then you have to change it but this just makes life a lot easier you go ahead and pull it up away from the pin you don't want to pull down you always pull up and out so that it's the same direction as the pin because you wouldn't want to accidentally pull the pin out that would suck and then you'd have to reclose it but yeah so this is it for the most part well now what we're going to do with this excess is make sure there's no twists or tangles in it like now we're going to go ahead and tuck that in so it should look like that once again pins facing up and then we can go ahead and close this flap 
just like that. It looks like it's ready to go. The only thing that we have left is the pilot chute. So I'm gonna make sure the bridle doesn't have any twists or tangles in it. So basically I'm gonna take those out right now. Just like that. Now, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna face the rig and <clears throat> you see how this pilot chute has this line going through it? I wanna make sure that when I pick it up, the line is going across this way and not up and down. It's gonna go across this way of the rig. I'm gonna lay it down so that the little hacky that's on there is facing down and then I'm gonna fold over with the line coming out through the bottom. Just put it in a ball. It'll, it'll get the job done. No, I'm kidding. But uh, the line's coming through the bottom and then you're just gonna fold it in half. One wing there, one bat wing there. So we just folded it into thirds. And then I'm gonna take from the bottom to the top with the line coming from the top now. Because originally it was coming from the bottom. When you fold it over, it comes from the top now. It should kind of match up with the hacky. You're gonna put your hand here and with your other hand, you're just gonna kind of fold over and stack the line on top of itself. Just like that. Now you always want the, the uh, bridle to come out the top from the same end of the hacky. So I'm gonna leave this little excess that we have here and just kind of fold it into thirds again. And at the end of it, you should have this nice little rectangle right here that you can kind of put away. I'm gonna kind of turn the, the uh, rig like this, mount it, and now you see we have these twists. I'm just gonna ride get these. <laughs> I'm gonna ride it, cowboy. I'm gonna get these twists out of the line. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and just take this little rectangle here and put it in the little rectangle down here. So basically I'm gonna take my finger, kind of hold the whole thing and just shove it down up in there. Now you shouldn't have any of the pilot shoots sticking out and it should fill the whole bottom of the canopy like, or the bottom of the rig just like that. The whole thing should be filled up. You kind of give it a nice little pat. You have your excess here. You can tuck it up under this flap here and then at the same time kind of tuck it towards the bottom of the rig until it disappears. Just like that. And then we're good to go. That's how you do a, a pack from beginning to start as probably as detailed as I could beginning have. Beginning to start? <laughs> That's how you do a pack from start to finish. Obviously it was long and yeah, I usually do this in like maybe seven, eight minutes. But yeah, that's how you get it done. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Kev on video. Kev on video. Bro. Kev on video. All right, beautiful people. And just like that, that is how you pack a canopy from start to finish. Um, once again, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you think the pack job was trash, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you think it was good and you actually learned something and took something away from it, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Um, subscribe and then like, because once again, it helps the YouTube algorithm. Um, and then yeah, I promise you guys, if you watch this video enough and you go over it and kind of dirt dive it at the same time or kind of work on your rig at the same time as watching the video and you do it multiple times, I'm telling you, you'll be able to pack your parachute. And this is personally the easiest method that I've learned. So there you guys go. Enjoy blue skies and be safe out there, boys. Yoo!